always enjoys us to look at the economic circumstances of this country. I mean, there is no way that a, a, a businessman will factor in alternative sources of energy when he comes to this country, his business plan. Certainly, he factors in affordable energy, and that affordable energy is energy electricity through the grid. So once the, that is there, you have a high chance of making your country attractive for investment. At the end of the day, if your country is attractive for private investment, then it means you are creating jobs for your people. It means that you are giving your people the kind of livelihood that they need to survive. Also on the other side, if we continue saying that every time there's a tithe increase, there's going to be some form of agitation, mm. then at the end of the day, the utility service uh, companies collapses. And what happens? Then governments with pressure from the donor community will say that let's privatize. And once it is privatized, all the workers, some workers, majority of the workers might lose their jobs. And where does that leave us? People will be on the streets and they won't be working. Mm. Mm. So let's look at the bigger picture. For now, we, if I cannot, it is expensive. Do you get me? Mm. But you have to conserve because my brother on the demand side, about 30% of the electricity that we use goes to waste. How? Yes, because we leave our lights on and we do not need it. We leave our air conditions on, we do not need it. We have to conserve. Today, the issue of electricity has become an argument of an economic good that is expensive. You see, for instance, even within the type that we have, the structure, there is the issue of the IPPs, the independent power producers are coming in with their own money to provide electricity for the country. They must be paid. If they are not paid, they collapse. They are investors. They've gone for loans to set up these uh, generators, generating companies for electricity for us to use. ECG must pay them. Mm -hmm. Their tariff was not in the previous tariff. Their tariffs are contractual. The way their tariffs are contractual, you have to pay it whether you like it or not. Then if you say you are not going to pay it, mm -hmm. then they have to go away. And if you look into the investment law of this country, it is against any issue where an investor will bring in money into the country and you are not able to help the investor to work. Then it means that Ghana will be that we are be. <laughs> then I don't know where they will take us. Right. I think it is time we all looked at these issues of electricity in terms of economic development of this country, moving this country forward. What about the TUC point about staggering? We, if we see if we are going to stagger, then we say we are doing load shedding. We go one hundred and fifty percent. We said that in staggering, mm. we are staggering now. Instead of the one fifty at a go, we said that we are staggering with seventy eight point nine. Mm. And my brother, two bodies have done work. One is an independent body. They have come up with the same results. PURC has done their work. They say 78.9. The independent body has come up with their work. They are close to what we are doing. They didn't get, they didn't use the same, the in-depth data that we use. Cost drivers. What is driving this percentage? Revenue requirements. They didn't go five days. You can't use five days to arrive at that decision. But even within the limited time, they are getting close to where we are coming from. So if two bodies are saying the same thing, why then do you say you will not agree? My brother, why then you say you will not agree? Mm. It, because when they went to the technical committee, if looking at the technical committee, they were also there. If right. there was a possibility of staggering and it is going to help the utilities providers to bring reliability into the system, I think the technical committee would have said this. Exactly. The technical committee is led by no mean a person but that Dr. Joabi. So we are having the same results. So what does it mean? Mm. What does it mean? So me after this, I thought that there was a need for us to say, where do we go from here? Not a blockade. Where do we go from here? How do we ensure that within the constraints in which we find ourselves, we are going to ensure quality of service? Because if you get reliability of power, Half of your problem is solved. I think the journalists should start doing stories with the industry 
and find out how much they spent when we were going through load shedding. I mean, compare it. You can't even compare. You can't even compare, my brother. But the load shedding was a crisis situation. Yes, it was a crisis situation because you see the non-availability of gas. Now, gas coming through the pipeline is far lower than we expect. So, with the I was going to do, with a generation mix of fifty percent thermal, mm. with the majority of that mix being crude oil, your electricity will not be cheap because LCO is expensive. Mm. The utility service providers have to pay, ECG has to pay the IPPs because ECG of takes the power from um, the IPPs, especially those who are using crude oil. Asobli is using gas, mm. but his price is not that high. Asobli's price was in the first time. But now we have, we have IPPs who's, uh, who are using LCU, full LCU, mm. and using full LCU. The tariff is high. So me, I believe that it is time that we all look forward and see which way to go. We can conserve electricity and pay less. And we should also look forward to pray that our gas plant to Atuabo comes on stream well in time. So that with natural gas in the equation, in the generation mix, we will see some prices that are reasonable. Others have also called for the automatic price adjust yes, price automatic adjustment, adjustment from are, are you going to be implementing that from now no, on? but we said it that in january we, we kick in we've always implemented it we've always gazetted and implemented it but it is in january we in, we did it and it was 120 percent january 2013 and looking at everything that we we're going through load shed and everything we couldn't pass on 120 percent People have set fire. Yes, <laughs> with that kind of crisis, and we looked at the reasonability of it and said no, okay. because as a regulator, I also have discretion, and we said that no, one twenty percent to pass on in an event where we are not even sure the kind of um, gas that was going to come, volumes of gas, mm -hmm. because we use full LCU. And if you use full LCU and VRE gets money, let's assume immediately we did it, the gas was repaired in March. Then what happens? Mm. Then we are going to shortchange consumers. But when it came and we saw that this is the volumes that are coming, and over time, this is what we are going to expect. Assumptions um, looking into the future. Then we said that, projecting into the future, we said that, fine, now we can have this. All right, thank you. You have a headache. Doctor said that is paracetamol mm -hmm. you need. You said, no, 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 me, I need coding. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. That was an interesting.